I hate Adam Schefter. I want to stuff this dude in a trash can. You know, I always got to start with a f Adam Schefter. I think, I think there's a lot of good things about social media. I also think there are a lot of terrible things about social media. And this is one of them. This story is one of them. I always wanted to venture into sports journalism. So, you know, my sophomore year, I got into mass communications and I was broadcasting basketball games and uh, our uh, little 500 race. I did a broadcast for that. That was pretty memorable. Uh, my professor always, you know, used to tell me she used to play it back for the students and everything. But the point is, I always wanted to kind of get into sports journalism and I've had the opportunity to do so with the work that I did at TPS and now here. But in 2015, I actually started this website, goodifitgoes.com, because there, you know about Deadspin, you know about Barstool, all those big sites. I wanted to be like a mid-level site, mid-level market website where people could come and you know, I wanted to create the content that I was creating at TPS or create the content that I'm creating now because I like talking about sports. Sports has been a big part of my life. And in 2015, I created goodifitgoes.com. And I was playing football in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, the Erie Explosion. Uh, this was like social media wasn't as influential and booming as it is now, but it started taking the steps. Like you see those guys like, uh, who is that one dweeb, Ari Abraham, who thought he knew where Kawhi was going and you had all these people speculating, like that's what social media has become. But back in 2015, it wasn't as, I guess, prosperous as it is now. Like I think I could have really benefited from breaking this story and my site could have been 75 million times bigger than what it is if I actually got the credit for doing the work that I did, which seems to be a recurring theme on this channel in the videos that I make when, you know, I sit dead center in the middle of the camera with my Detroit hat on coming to you kind of pissed off. Now, this is an old story, but I figured it's the perfect time to tell it because when I've told it in the past, either nobody believed me or nobody gave a damn. So now that I have a little bit more of a bigger voice, I feel like, you know, now's the time to bring it to you. So like I said, I was back in Erie, PA, uh, playing for the Erie Explosion, and we had just started camp. We were like two or three days into camp, and I banged my knee on the ground. So, you know, me, I'd never really been like injured for a long extended period of time. Uh, I had to go get a, a scope on my knee. Um, I sprained my MCL, they took out some cartilage, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that day that I did the uh, CAT scan, um, I was in uh, Lexicon or some doctor's office. And, you know, I was calling people, talking to them about my status. You know, I won't be back for like five or six weeks. And I, was talking to the source that helped me break this story. And he said, hey man, did you know that Tebow was working out with the Eagles? I said, oh man, that's a good scoop. Cause he knew I just started my website, but I'm driving and I didn't really have anybody else working on the website with me at the time. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm driving, I'm thinking like, what can I do to put this out there? I tweeted it. That's it. Story, big pickup, right? Gang traction, get some notoriety, plug my website. Hey, goodifitgoes.com. Boom, I'm on there. I'm on. I'm about to be a journalist. That's it. About 30 minutes passed by. No breaking news, none of that. So I get a brilliant idea. Rule number one, kids. Never tweet your heroes. I tweeted this story to Adam Schefter. I tweeted him this story, and here's that three-minute window I was talking about. 
where I can't say for sure that he stole my story, but I know for sure that he stole my story. Because when I tweeted him this story, there have been no rumblings of anything. I was the first one with the scoop. Three minutes later, this dork tweeted it like he just stumbled upon the greatest story in human history. What, look what I just stumbled upon. I'm Adam Schefter. Look what I just stumbled upon. I can't believe all of my hard work is paying off right now because I just stumbled upon this great story by myself. That's what I did because I'm Adam Schefter. Like the guy with all the contacts in the league and connections and people he talks to, people that confide in him and trust him. This stumbled upon my story and tweeted, well, what do you know? It looks like Tim Tebow is working out with the Philadelphia Eagles. Come on, dog. So quite naturally, I get upset. Now, let me clarify this, okay? I can spell. I know it's cite your sources, C-I-T-E. But if somebody just stole a story from you that could change your career or change your life, I think spelling is out the window. Now, you might not believe me, which most people don't, I understand. Because with social media, people ignore facts all the time and this is one of those times where at the moment it happened people ignored the fact like i showed proof i had screenshots you know i talked about it extensively i wrote a blog on goodifitgoes.com about it and i tried to get my story out there and if you think i'm lying twitter search adam schefter stole i'll bring up some tweets right now from people claiming that Adam Schefter stole their story. So me firsthand, I believe them. I know he stole their story because it happened to me. There were people in my mentions telling me he doesn't have to cite his sources with you. What the f I think there's a good and bad to social media. Like the good is the opportunity that it presents for smaller creators or smaller journalists to kind of grow and build their brand. I think that's the best part about social media. I think the worst part about social media are the people that step on those creators' toes and basically do for themselves. People are out here acting like there's not enough money for everybody. There's not enough opportunity for everybody. Stepping on people's necks, stepping on people's toes. I hate gatekeepers. I absolutely hate gatekeepers that force you to jump through all these hoops that are unnecessary. Oh, we can't help you. Oh, I don't know how to offer advice. Like, it takes nothing to offer advice or give people a break. And I'm trying to take what I do and give more opportunity to people around me because I know there are a lot of talented people out here who want the opportunity to showcase their skills. That's the only thing I've ever wanted. And it's like, hey man, give me this opportunity and I promise you, you won't regret it. And this is why this story pisses me off so much is because Adam Schefter had a great opportunity and still does to help people beneath him get in better positions and he uses it for his own selfish gain when he doesn't need to. He's already employed by ESPN. He's already one of the top tier analysts according to everybody else because it's Adam Schefter from here on out. Like you've seen what type of integrity he has. When he leaked the JPP hand story, he, he leaked his medical records. The bullshit he had about Robert Kraft, uh, there being a bigger a bigger name in the massage parlor uh, with Robert Kraft, when that happened, that story disappeared. Like that's somebody whose work I thought was pretty on point. Like I thought that I respected Adam Schefter as a as a journalist. Like I I know he's been taught about journalistic integrity and you know doing the right thing. 
and it's a bullshit move. And once again, people think it's sour grapes. Maybe, probably, but f that. Like, I don't like being stepped on. I told you that in the TPS video. I'm not asking for much, man. I'm asking people for give, to, to give me credit for the work that I've done. That's all I ask for. This is what journalism is now. It's a guessing game and who's first. These guys let trolls break stories or fake stories, fake report stories, and they report them on the air with no validation and no back, no backup sources, nothing. Uh, on FS1, uh, the dweeb sports talk Barry, he tricked Skip Bayless into talking about James Harden man, James Harden's man boobs. Because the reports are this has been going on for two years. Yes. There was the one report yesterday that it got so bad in practice going back two years ago that Chris Paul was making fun of James man boobs in practice to the point that he broke down in tears and had to leave a couple of practices. I'm pretty sure there are thousands of cases. These people build their backs on other people's work and reap all the benefits. And I'm tired of it. Quite frankly, hey man, Tim Tebow was working out with the Eagles. Tip from Daquan Young. Maybe he thought, I mean, maybe I'm not anybody. I'm not, you know, I'm not up there as far as media credentials or, you know, football. I wasn't really up there as like a, a credible guy, but I was credible enough to get credit for a story. That's all asking for I wasn't asking for part of his paycheck I wasn't asking for anything I wanted credit on my story that I broke that's it so just so think about this man every time an ESPN analyst FS1 analyst anybody tweets a story with store with sources there's a high probability that they stole that story from somebody else doing the reporting and i'm pretty sure that this is not the first case i know it's not the first case and it won't be the last case but it ain't gonna happen to me no more i don't really follow reporters like that and i think adam schefter kind of soured me on that because like i need inf i need the news and i need the information i should probably get it from my sources now but i i know that People do this all the time, and I just want, I want to put a stop to it, or at least I want them to stop them or stop me, them from doing it to me. Like, I can't imagine if I broke that story in 2020, how different it would be if Adam Schefter stole my story then. Because there would actually, there would probably be justice. And I, I'm expecting no justice from this, because it's a story that's old, but it's a precedent that he set for himself as a journalist. And, you know, the more people talk about it, the more he's gonna have to actually do some fucking work. And that's, I, I just wanna push people to actually, you know, do the right thing. And maybe maybe I'm asking, to, I'm asking for way too much. Hey man, do the right thing. I don't that. Just do the right thing, that's all you gotta do. Spike Lee said it.